Bon après-midi, bienvenue sur GRF Web TV, émission à cœur ouvert. Et exceptionnellement, aujourd'hui, nous avons une deuxième émission. So, I'll shift to English uh, rapidly. So, à cœur ouvert, open heart, the name, the title of our program, our broadcast. Well, exceptionally, today we are having a second one in the afternoon because we have someone very special with us this evening. We have uh, Dr. Jacob Ignatius, who is Assistant Professor, the Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation at SRM IST Chennai. Later on, we're going to have Dr. Divla Uttar, who is a General Practitioner at GRF, who is going to join us. And also, I have the privilege of having the Director of Training and HR, Mr. B.J. Ramton. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, J Dr. Jacob, yes. how are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for the kind introduction. It's a pleasure being at, uh, in Mauritius with GRF. Okay. At a later stage, you're going to talk about Mauritius. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, uh, other than GRF, you're going to... I, I'm sure you have lots to say about Mauritius itself. Absolutely. That's your first visit to Mauritius. This is my first visit, yes. Okay. Are, we look, are you looking forward for... Uh, Absolutely. You know, uh, uh, there's so much more to be explored here. So I, do, I didn't have much time to... Yet How many days you've been here? It's been three days now. <coughs> okay. And when are you moving back? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. So <coughs> my good friend uh, Vijay is also here this afternoon for the introduction of our topic. Please. Yes, Rama. Thank you. Thank you very much. And most welcome again to Dr. Jacob, um, whom I, I, I happened to meet back in Chennai a few weeks back when we accompanied uh, Professor Pasuraman for, for the mission that we were on of launching the GRF uh, India uh, back in Chennai and Delhi. So it happened that we met Dr. Jacob and, and the team as well uh, at SRM University, uh, Institute of Science and Technology, uh, along with uh, the Pro Vice Chancellor, uh, Lieutenant uh, Dr. Colonel Ravi Kumar, mm -hmm. and our dear good friend, um, Dr. Kartikeyan, who is very well known uh, back in, in, in GRF here. He's already visited, visited us uh, quite a few times already. So Dr. Jacob uh, is uh, representing, as I said, uh, university, uh, SRM University uh, from Chennai, mm -hmm. um, f from whom we've, we've signed an MOU. Sorry. So we've signed an MOU for collaboration mm -hmm. um, in, in various fields. Um, I'll just briefly go through because I, I, I understand that you will have definitely lots of time to talk about about the details of, of the uh, MOU that has been signed and also the various collaboration yeah. potentials that, mm -hmm. that, that, that has been put forward to. So once again, we thank um, the, the university for, for putting uh, Dr. Jacob uh, here today and for, for the whole few days that he has been with us for our anniversary as well and, and tomorrow and tomorrow he will be departing so just brief guidelines in terms of where the collaborative agreement is is mainly in the joint work about collaborating in the field of disability mm -hmm. as, as we all know that GRF uh, has a forte in that and, and we cater for for people with disabilities and and this is where SRM um, the faculty of med medicine would be coming into into play for us to help in the research rehabilitation we will have faculties flying down here coming in terms of doing studies going out on on, on the medical camps mm. so these these are the activities that we are planning and these are things that has been agreed uh, already already agreed between mm. between between the two institutions uh, we, we also looking at uh, potentially projects that we are going to work uh, jointly mm. uh, based on the various um, uh, activities and the various uh, forte that SRM University has, it's, as, I, as I mentioned, mainly within the medical field, mm -hmm. where it would be beneficial for both parties, and at the end of the day, it's it's beneficial for the people who are going to whom we are going to look after as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm I'm going to be very brief because I don't want to to jump onto the whole program <laughs> yeah, that, that Rama and, and Jacob and later Dr. Divla is going to, 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 to have. Um, but just to add to that, um, uh, as we say, as a premiere, I'm also announcing that just after this program, we're also having the live launching of a telemedicine program project with SRM 
with GRF. So it's a joint collaboration. So we mm -hmm. will have a separate program just after this program, yeah. whereby we will have the faculty from the SRM University in Chennai uh, joining us, Dr. Jacob and his team. Who, well, Dr. Jacob is here. I'm, I'm sure he would have loved to extend his stay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay. so we will have the team from, from Mauritius and the team from Chennai who's going to join for the launching of the official um, telemedicine. Mm -hmm. and when also what time is this scheduled? It is scheduled at 2.30. Mm -hmm. um, Mauritian we, time. Yeah, Mauritian time. 2.30, Mauritian, 2 30 p.m. Mauritian time. But I think it would take at least 10 to 15 minutes for the introductions and, and, and everything that we're going to excellent, set up. Excellent, excellent. And, and we would be joined, of course, by the one and only Professor Mugamba Suraman as well, who happens to be in Chennai as well. Yeah. So he's going to join us, who is the founder of, of Global Rainbow Foundation. So good luck to both of you. And thank you, thank you. So good, today is, is the day of, of having doctors on my on, on the set of the DRF Web TV. This morning I had Dr. <laughs> Ramphal from Strasbourg, uh, France. Yeah. Okay. And right now I, I have Dr. Jacob, Jacob and uh, Ignatius. Ignatius. Okay. Yeah. And also Dr. Divla is going to join us uh, uh, later. Yeah. And uh, you're going to have another yes. session as from 2.30 p.m. So with other uh, eminent personalities, yeah. most of them being doctors. Absolutely, I guess. absolutely. So, <laughs> so I'll be leaving you with, with Dr. Jacob. So yeah. have a good program. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, BJ. Uh, so we'll catch you at a later stage. So thank you remain you. us uh, with yes. us for a few minutes. So yes, said uh, Dr. Jacob, let's uh, have a brief introduction of yourself. Let our viewers know who is Dr. Jacob. Sure. So uh, I'm Dr. Ignatius Jacob, and uh, I'm a physical medicine and rehabilitation specialist uh, uh, in SRM Institute of Science and Technology, uh, Chennai, India. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, uh, we, we, what we do and what as a specialist, as a physiatrist, we do is take care of patients uh, to improve their functional ability, mm -hmm. uh, to give them the maximum independence in terms of their uh, daily living, um, uh, be it whatever may be the impairments, uh, stroke, uh, spinal cord injuries, etc. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> this is uh, on brief, probably we're going to talk more about uh, what I do, the specifics <laughs> of... Uh, yeah, yeah, we get, we're going to go into all the details at the later stage, yeah, no problem. And, uh, uh, this is, you know, in a brief of what mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I do uh, back in my town, and then I'm very happy to be associated with Global Rainbow Foundation on this mission in terms of uh, working together uh, in telemedicine research and uh, many more things which are in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. um, I think we would be, I'd be happy to discuss more. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, other than being the, uh, we call that the five chakras. Uh, that's the correct term. Uh, physiatrist. 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 Okay, physiatrist. the correct term. Okay. Yeah. So, physiatrist is about what exactly? So, as I was mentioning, so, uh, let, let, us put, let me put it this way. You know, uh, Give us, a, uh, uh, the viewers, some live example for them to understand much better yeah. this particular aspect. Yeah. So, let's say there is a patient uh, who had uh, a stroke. Uh, mm -hmm. A stroke is something there is... Uh, a clot or a bleeding in the brain mm -hmm. following which the patient uh, end up being paralyzed mm -hmm. and uh, he get he gets to become dependent on his family members on his uh, daily activities yeah so what initially happens is you know they take care of all the m acute medical problems you know they go to the neurologist a neurosurgeon uh, a physician and then try to address the acute problem which is the stroke itself mm -hmm. After that, what happens to the patient? You know, he is, uh, let's say he is a breadwinner of the family. He's left on his own. own and uh, he is the only earning member of the family. And he has two school-going children. What is he going to do? How does he going to support his family? So this is where a physiatrist comes into play or a physical medicine rehabilitation specialist comes into play where we don't look into the problem as one. You know, we look as a person as a whole. How can we make this person who is paralyzed, you know, on one side or waist down or neck down mm -hmm. to make him independent or make him productive, adjusting to whatever disability which he has? Yeah. So when I say that uh, we are looking into in terms of using whatever function he has mm -hmm. to improve his uh, productiveness and mm. uh, uh, excellent, using excellent. using a multidisciplinary team. Okay. Um, so as physicians, as uh, physiatrists and as physicians, we have certain medical interventions like you know we do injections we do prescribed medications we do simple surgeries to help them uh, regain their function mm -hmm. along with that we work closely with the interdisciplinary team of physiotherapist occupational therapist speech language pathologist mm -hmm. psychologist so meaning that in other words are you going to capitalize a little bit of what is left correct good with that person mm. you're going to maximize that <coughs> maximize that at the same time try to gain uh, whatever is lost also yeah so uh, uh, it may be you know like whether patient gets new function or gets new movement after the paralysis it doesn't matter but mm. 
we try to make him uh, independent with whatever he has. This is what I'm asking. Yeah. Eh? With, with whatever is, is left yeah. also, not necessarily being able to... Some, well, we, we hope that we can cure that person, yeah. uh, but suffering from wh whatever uh, wh wh what happened, mm -hmm. but mostly to maximize that that person can still carry on with his daily work activity absolutely with uh, what absolutely. is left etc and uh, you do that every day yeah i've been like doing this for the last uh, eight eight years uh, last eight years last eight years so um, uh, back when I, uh, I i graduated from st john's uh, national academy yeah let's talk a little bit about that please yeah, yeah. so uh, probably uh, a little bit of history of how, yeah how please how yeah it's very important uh, for our viewers i was that's what i was going to ask you yeah. not only uh, dr jacob right now what he's doing but yeah. what he has been doing in the past to reach where he is today sure so uh, i graduated out of medical school in 2010 and then uh, uh, some I, I 12 years ago then yeah 12 years ago and then i i'm i was a professional tennis player so i was in the professional circuit in india and uh, uh, it happened so that uh, when i completed my uh, uh, med medical school i uh, ended up having a severe back injury while training mm -hmm. so it it uh, i had a severe back pain with sciatic uh, or like pain through my leg i was not able to walk uh, so i consulted the neurosurgeons there they told me oh you have to get a surgery done and you had to <laughs> stop playing tennis. I, I had to stop playing tennis, uh, and then it was very devastating back then. So uh, what happened was I was not prepared to uh, uh, go under the knife. So I decided what are the other. You were not prepared mentally, you mean, or physically? I would say mentally, uh, or like I would say, put it both ways because uh, getting yourself under the knife and on your spine it's, it's a big decision. Mm. So um, I I didn't wanted to take that back then and then I wanted to explore. Was that a risk at that time? Yeah, it is. It was a risk. So I wanted to explore more options and I'm being a new medical graduate and having access to all the medical literature, started studying what are the other options. So then I came across uh, rehab uh, could be potentially helpful in terms of uh, mm -hmm. improving my condition. So I, I attended rehab and then although I was, it was not uh, very, uh, I went through physiotherapy sessions, it was not very successful. Mm -hmm. So um, <coughs> six months down the line, I started to think, oh, should, should I have had gone back to surgery again? Mm -hmm. So, but then uh, I would say there was like five, ten percent better to compare to what I started. So I kept pushing. Yeah. I learned all the rehab techniques by myself and I rehabilitated myself. On your own? On my own. Yeah. So it took <laughs> me two years uh. to come out of my uh, situation. situation. Uh -huh. And then I started to realize by then, like, you know, everyone, all my all my friends in my medical school, they were into PG, they were into uh, post-graduation courses yes. in the various parts of India. So I was just uh, still way behind and I was starting to think uh, what would be my purpose, right? Uh, so, so you were questioning yourself that after two years seeing your friends there. Uh, Bijay, uh, just to share with you that uh, Dr. Jacob was, uh, I, I, can, I, can I say he's still a professional uh, tennis player? Yeah, I wouldn't say. Well, you are aware about that. <laughs> no, no not one in Mauritius was aware. Well That's not why not this this program is called Open Heart. Uh -huh. It's not an open heart surgery, uh -huh. but this is the theme of all of the programs here on on, on Mondays. Uh -huh. we, in French, we call it Accueil Ouvert. Okay? okay, so we we manage to uh, make our uh, uh, guests okay unlock yeah, their potential. potential. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, please proceed. Yeah, so um, <laughs> then uh, it so happened, I started to realize, like, I'm in this condition, you know, uh, I am a medical doctor uh, going through this uh, amount of problem with not much of support. So why should I not take this as a profession? And mm -hmm. then I started looking into opportunities where I could specialize as a rehab doctor. Back then when I was looking, there was the, the specialty, the physiatry uh, field was very primitive in India. Mm -hmm. uh, there was very few medical schools offering this. And then I identified a couple of medical schools, uh, one of which was uh, uh, St. John's National Academy of Health Sciences, one of the premier institutions in India. So I gave uh, a competitive exam for it and got selected, got into rehab and uh, that. So you were both as a patient and as a doctor? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> so, uh, I would say I had the first hand experience so before coming into uh, the field. Yeah, okay, okay. And how, now you're okay, you feel comfortable, you, uh, or do we still have some uh, things, a few things left of what you had before? Um, uh, uh, you mean to ask uh, or the, ish, the problem itself? or No, the problem, the problem <laughs> I mean. 
Um, I would say like, you know, uh, now and then it comes and goes, but uh, I have uh, learned uh, the ways to manage it and I still play, I, I'm still physically active. Let, let me s tell you why I'm putting this question, because most probably your patients, they, they, they face same situation. Absolutely. And you are in a very good position to share with them that, okay, you have somehow to live with some 10, 30 percent, I don't know what the percentage of what's left, mm -hmm. still left, mm -hmm. but you have to manage with that. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, uh, what had happened was you know like uh, back when i when mm. they did the scan they told like your disc is out you know your disc is completely out and it's compressing the nerves so we had to remove it uh, remove remove the oh. disc uh, so uh, <laughs> i didn't want to take the opportunity take that and do that because i know the risks involved but i wouldn't say surgery is not uh, uh, a good option it is for certain conditions or certain situations it is uh, life changing um, <coughs> but I don't, I, I never regret because uh, that is what has brought me here and uh, I feel uh, glad and thankful that, uh, you know, uh, I, the Almighty has given me the opportunity to uh, lead the uh, people in the front. Okay, let me add something else while I'm putting all these <coughs> technical questions because I also have that L3, L4 issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I've been with a chiropractor uh -huh. and uh, fortunately I, I can say, well, same. I was being invited to go for, not, not with him uh, prior to that, with, to, for a surgery. Then I said, no, I won't because I think, I believe that I can still manage with that. And I'm still, you see, so sometimes we do have that is a few issues depending on certain precautions which we have to take. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, we can still live with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Vijay, you have any question at this stage? No, um, not really, but I'm surprised, uh, agreeably surprised that, that Jacob was, was playing tennis and he still plays. Probably next time you come, we'll have a round <laughs> along with him uh, when, when we have some. Yeah, time. definitely, we'll definitely. I'm sure, I'm sure we will so, do that. Yeah, so uh, before we come back to uh, all the uh, technical things about, about what the MOU, what we're going to talk about, uh, let's talk a little bit about your visit to Mauritius. Sure, so um, uh, uh, this was supposed to be an official visit, and it is an official visit uh, as I'm representing my uh, uh, institution, SRMIST. Uh, <coughs> but off my official visit, uh, what what I would say is like uh, at the moment I arrived at the airport, uh, all I could experience was you know the freshness of the air. Mm. And, uh, uh, you feel that difference? A lot of difference because back in India, it's always things are uh, okay. on the toes and busy and noisy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but here, you know, like so fresh and refreshing. Although I had a very, uh, <coughs> uh, the timings of the flight was uh, yeah, tight uh, schedule, very tight. Very tight schedule, but I didn't feel the tiredness because I had to come directly to GRF to start my work. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I had the opportunity just to see things out of the window, but uh, I had a, a brief chance to explore the city yesterday and uh, uh, went to the beach, had a very nice swim, very clear waters. The sand in the beach is like so... Uh, okay, so it's not the case there? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you're from which part exactly of, of, of India? I'm from uh, Chennai, uh, Tamil Nadu. Mm -hmm. uh, so you speak Tamil? I speak Tamil. Fluently, I mean, definitely. Very fluently. Okay, I can, on, can I, uh, right now I will say Vanakkam and at the end of the program I will say Nandri. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's uh, good enough. That's yeah, good enough. and maybe some Rumbanala, things like. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe uh, also I know some Sapadu. Uh, uh, a few, just a few words, as you can see. <laughs> that's good, that's good, that's good. So, uh, uh, in, in Chennai, uh, so where uh, uh, I was, I was born and brought up in a, in a uh, town called Trichy, mm -hmm. uh, down in the south of Tamil Nadu. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I moved to uh, Chennai to do my medical school and then my uh, um, higher masters in Bangalore, etc. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've been to most places in India, uh, traveled especially re relating to my uh, specialty. Mm -hmm. So you you've been traveling all across India? All across India because I wanted to explore um, uh, because we had this, I had especially this unique opportunity during my residency at St. John's uh, um, to visit travel around India, take a six months uh, time to visit the different rehab departments in India to understand how they perform and how they function, what are the lacunas. Mm -hmm. So I got that opportunity to visit all around India. I've been to Mumbai, Delhi, Himachal Pradesh. Um, uh, Jaipur, Gujarat, uh, the place Rajasthan, Punjab, uh, you name it, name it, I've been to all the mm. high-functioning rehabilitation yeah. institutes in India. 
So uh, that has given me a bigger edge in terms of uh, doing a lot of things uh, at present. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, J- 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 uh, Jacob, because Jacob, it's Jacob. Jacob. Jacob, okay. Uh, and and uh, there's that Emmanuel also in your name, isn't it? Yeah, Emmanuel is my uh, father's name. That's my uh, son's name. So um, uh, 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 he, uh, you know, he's, he's a very interesting person uh, who always uh, given me the freedom to do whatever I wanted mm-hmm. to do from the beginning. And uh, he is, he's, he's, uh, he's almost going to turn 70 now and he's a civil engineer. Mm-hmm. He still works to this still day. Okay. He still works to this day. Uh, he's running a couple of projects back in India. Um, so wonderful. So right now, uh, another person uh, whom you have met uh, since you've been here, Dr. Amugam Pasuraman. Uh, he's uh, from India. He just sent a message. So Jorif is happy to welcome Dr. Jacob uh, in on Jorif Web TV. We are grateful for the MOU SRM and Jorif have signed, and this will help to enhance our medical services to our Mauritian patients. So this is uh, what uh, Dr. Amugam Pasuraman. I'm, uh, I'm very glad. Yeah, he, he's just listening to you. You can say what, uh, yeah. Uh, Professor Parasan, I'm very glad uh, you're e- able to, in your busy schedule, I know your commitments back in India, uh, being able to take your time and send this regards. Uh, I would uh, appreciate this and I thank you for having me here in uh, Global Info Foundation. Okay, so as mentioned earlier, I also have, uh, can we just move the camera <coughs> for Dr. Devla, please? Yeah, okay. One second. So, yeah, as mentioned earlier, we have uh, Dr. Devla Uttar, who is general practitioner from JRF, uh, and who has joined us. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mr. Rama. Good evening, Dr. Jacob. Devla, on the set of JRF TV, it's only Rama. There's no mister. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> good. So, it will be only Rama. On uh, So, yeah. So, it's very good to have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this morning I was with in Strasbourg, France, with another doctor, Dr. Ramphal. And right now, I have Dr. Ofta and Uttar. Yes. That's it. And Dr. Jacob. So, mm-hmm. I'm so elated, happy to have you around. Yeah. So, let's proceed further. So let's talk about your actual organization and the purpose of your visit to Mauritius. Sure. So uh, uh, to give an introduction about my organization, mm-hmm. uh, uh, SRM Institute of Science and Technology. So this uh, uh, this is a multi-stream institution which has uh, uh, many, many faculties. Uh, uh, one of the faculties being the medical and health sciences. Mm-hmm. So uh, with that, we have uh, science and technology. Uh, we have law. We have humanities, um, hotel management, um, um, MBAs, etc. So we have we run like close to six, seven faculties. One of the uh, uh, biggest faculties is medical and health sciences. So SRM IST has uh, uh, close to fifty-two thousand students. And Can you mention it again? Because it's so <laughs> amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, on a given year at SRM IST, there are fifty-two thousand. Students, fifty-two thousand, fifty-two thousand wow. students, all wonderful, India, amazing, <laughs> yes. all over India, uh, uh, graduating out in various uh, faculties, and uh, there's close to uh, four thousand faculties or four thousand uh, um, um, specialists in various fields, mm. uh, helping these graduates to get their uh, degrees or uh, masters, and uh, and this is located <coughs> in Chennai. Yeah, the the main the biggest uh, institute is located in. Uh, Close to Chennai, uh, a place called Kartan Kulatur. Mm-hmm. Um, um, so this is the biggest or the parent uh, institute, and uh, we have s- we are spread all over India in uh, five six locations. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are placed in Delhi, Jaipur, etc. So uh, uh, all around all around uh, India in various places. Uh, so at at uh, uh, the place where I am positioned at present um, um, in Kartan Kulatur. So the medical and health sciences was established back in uh, the early 2000s and uh, right now we have, it's a tertiary care center Hmm. uh, with uh, medical college facility and there are uh, 300 medical uh, um, students uh, graduating uh, every year and we have several postgraduate courses, uh, several uh, MCH and DM uh, uh, courses running and um, I know like out of all these courses, our uh, field, uh, the physical medicine and rehabilitation, is uh, front running in a lot of ways. So, uh, the purpose of this visit is when uh <coughs> Professor Aramagam uh, visited back 
last month, uh, uh, like uh, the month before. Mm-hmm. So we took him to a tour around uh, SRM, and he was very much impressed in terms of how uh, this collaboration could help uh, or uh, help us mutually, both GRF and us, in terms mm-hmm. of how we could exchange a lot of things in terms of research, yes, uh, telemedicine, faculty exchange, uh, things like that. So well excellent. So, Dr. Uttar, so <coughs> listening to those amazing things happening there, you as a doctor, how do you feel about it? Yeah, I'm quite amazed about the institution and I read lots of things about SRM. We have been working with uh, Dr. Kartike and we have been doing uh, telemedicine many times and our patient beneficiated, uh, beneficiated from this telemedicine. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we have many patients who had a stroke, who had any other uh, F- problems, any uh, health issues, which they don't know where to go. Sometimes they are misguided. They don't know uh, which treatment to, to choose. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there is uh, like uh, one treatment which might uh, cost about millions of rupees, wow. but the benefit is not that much. Uh-huh. So we have to to choose the proper treatment. We have to help the the patient to choose the proper uh, treatment. This is where telemedicine help a lot. Mm-hmm. We get the specialists from there to help us to talk to the patient through telemedicine and then they can choose which way to go, which treatment to, to choose. Wonderful with what, what uh, Dr. Otto just mentioned. So how do you process, how to know you've got a patient, as you mentioned earlier, let's take the case of someone who has suffered from a stroke. Eh? We don't know exactly which way to go. Am I right? This is what yes. you just mentioned earlier. Which way to go? So how do you proceed as from there? Please share with our viewers. Yes, yeah, so uh, what uh, uh, as uh, Dr. Devla was rightly mentioning, you know, guiding the patient what to do next is very mm-hmm. much important because uh, we all know there is uh, care for uh, uh, saving a patient, uh, you know, life-saving treatments for stroke or mm-hmm. uh, you'd be doing giving uh, medicines or giving injections. But and also, sorry, and also a question of cost, as yes. uh, <coughs> Dr. Devla yeah. just mentioned. Yeah. So what? Next, you know, like when the patient is paralyzed or what next is just is a very uh, big question. And uh, uh, that's where we help or we come into play in terms of guiding the patient, uh, uh, holding their hand through and through in terms of what could be done and uh, uh, giving them or uh, showing them the roadmap of recovery. Mm-hmm. So uh, this back there, we do uh, uh, have a uh, approach where uh, we have an initial screening of those patients and then we have a dedicated uh, uh, inpatient service for those patients where they stay with us mm-hmm. and uh, uh, the, the, the facility is completely free mm-hmm. except for um, uh, their pharmacy expenses and uh, other orthotic devices but whatever treatment which they get there is completely free. We do have a corporate um, uh, service where they have to pay a, a reasonable amount for the treatment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this is how we are doing. But how uh, we see this uh, collaboration could benefit is, uh, I've been like seeing patients over the last uh, two days. Yeah, please <coughs> mention that because this is what I want yes. our viewers to know for the few days that you've been spending here. You've been here f- since only a few days. Yes. Okay. Yes. What has been your, uh, your field of collaboration up to now yes. and what are the results if both of you uh, b- b- will answer the same question? Yes. yes. So um, uh, uh, I saw a patient with stroke and then uh, uh, this patient uh, is unable, is wheelchair bound and he's unable to walk. So. Mm. Uh, uh, the, the family was asking like you know whether whether he would walk or what is the next step and all those things so after my assessment I came to realize like a lot of things could be done within the capacity which is present in Mauritius mm-hmm. uh, through uh, telemedicine uh, uh, oh, uh, consultations oh, oh, oh. I've started few medications and then uh, uh, the plan is to review uh, them every once in a fortnight to see how are they progressing and then giving rec- recommendations uh, to the uh, uh, the rehab team here mm-hmm. uh, to uh, do what is the best for the patients and following them over time. So even though we are not here physically, so we're going to be... Uh, remotely, you remotely, mean? Remotely, uh, <laughs> we're going to be in touch with the Global Rainbow Foundation. Uh, we're going to have... And with the d- Dr. Divla, of <laughs> course. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, so we're going to have a, a, a tailored uh, telemedicine uh, portal uh, where we're going to have... Uh, all the patients registered, we could have a, g- a good data of all those patients, mm-hmm. uh, which could be helpful in terms of studying the patients, uh, which would be helpful in research and uh, coming up with new treatment plans. Uh, uh, Do you customize? Yes, that is the, uh, um, you know, the uh, essence <laughs> of, of, of uh, uh, physiatry, you know, like I- every patient is different in their own way. Mm-hmm. Right? So we can't just... Uh, 
uh, one pill doesn't fit for all the patients mm-hmm. so in rehab especially so it, it, it is not the one size fits all no no <laughs> not it's no. the contrary <coughs> no so uh, uh, just for t- uh, to say like uh, two patients which i saw with the same diagnosis but they have different needs one patient would say that oh no i'm not planning to walk i just have to be comfortable in the wheelchair yeah yeah mm. another patient this uh, i wanted to walk you have to i want to go and play tennis again yeah, yeah. were you yeah. aware that he's a, he's a, pe- a, a, a professional tennis player no <laughs> i'm t- i'm sharing it with you right now okay <laughs> <laughs> okay so now each and every one at your ref is aware that you're a professional tennis player <laughs> okay yes um so um Yeah, like uh, uh, we can't really uh, uh, plan, come up with one treatment modality for everyone. So yeah, it has to be customized to the needs of the patients. Mm. So that's that's how we have in our assessment uh, format uh, felt need. Mm. After all the medical evaluation, there's one thing called felt need. Yeah. So in that uh, felt need, uh, we would ask the patient, what do you want to do? It's not that... Uh, most most uh, specialization the doctor decides what the patient has to do oh, so here okay, we okay, ask okay. the patient what is your goal what do you want to do what do you want to achieve like i said a patient in a wheelchair might be happy in a wheelchair you go and make him walk maybe It's putting him in painful, more distress yes. yeah so another patient in a wheelchair want to walk so uh, we make it a point that the felt need is highlighted uh, yes. there so that so uh, the p- doctor develop the patient <coughs> is the boss the patient is going to decide yes. about his f- destiny Yes and we will uh, we will guide the patient Definitely. if the patient is uh, is able to do it we will guide it and the will power also of the patient Definitely. is important mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. because i i remember there's one patient the wife called me at 8:30 in the morning told me that uh, his husband is having difficulty in walking when i went there i examined the patient i said okay maybe it's a stroke we went for a scan we did everything i started the treatment the so next day there was another physiotherapist here sudhakar I told the patient okay you can come and start your physiotherapy. After 2 weeks the patient was riding his bicycle. Mm. <laughs> wow, he wonderful. Was, yeah, he was not able to walk. Now he's riding his bicycle. Is it a question so, of will power yes, also? Yes, so will power is very important because some people is like okay I'm not able to walk so I won't be able to walk at all so I will be like this. But you know the aim for a patient in a wheelchair is mm-hmm. always us to remove the patient fr- out of the wheelchair yeah. okay not to make the patient bedridden mm-hmm. okay so we have to improve the patient condition we don't have to immobilize the patient mm-hmm. this is our aim usually mm-hmm. in other words uh, 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 that, that wheelchair shouldn't be his comfort zone <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> good yes yeah so um, uh, uh, that way you know like uh, uh, trying to address the patients from the uh, patient's perspective you know like we we can have an idea in overall picture in terms of okay this patient has this uh, ability or like this uh, could be achieved mm-hmm. but at the same time involving the family involving uh, the patients uh, in terms of deciding the goals which we set so uh, uh, we have a very robust uh, mechanism in terms of how to come up with goals uh, for example there is a stroke patients we set up goals short term mid term and long term short term could be anywhere between 4 to 6 weeks and then uh, trying to closely monis- monitor the, the the rehab team how are they achieving those goals so uh, and then uh, we have uh, rehab family meets where uh, the entire family along with the to educate the family educate mm. them yes. about the goals uh, where are they going because Uh, there's family <coughs> involvement also yeah. yes, like in any rehab <coughs> situation maybe for drug addicts for alcohol uh, all th- all these uh, aspects when we talk about rehab we have the family involvement yes. so yes. here also we have that family involvement absolutely absolutely eh? because without the family support uh, uh, rehabilitating a patient back into uh, the community is going to be very difficult so uh, family Uh, plays an important part yes. and uh, dr devla do you do you come across uh, uh, easily to be able to meet the family and when you request or are they left on their own the patients we have um, i see around 100 of patients more than 100 of patients every month so we have different kind of people mm-hmm. when you meet people you will see some are very concerned about their parents their their family members yeah they are anxious 
some are too much some are okay they are anxious yeah. they know this is important they they will uh, listen to you they will do what you want you mean some sometimes you have other anxiety also from pay from pay rents yes that's true we have some who is not willing to give treatment some is over treating the patient for example a cerebral palsy uh, patient they they want to do all types of uh, surgery in that patient they want that child to start walking sometimes it's not possible we mm -hmm. have to tell the patient to educate them to make them understand that it's not possible for that child so mm -hmm. it's will it will be more painful for that child mm. so some are they they are able to understand some or not and on the other hand you've got uh, patients who are left on their own no one to care about them yes that we have that we have especially in elderly Mm. We have that they are left in their own. They are not. No one is there to look after them. Yeah. Since you are talking about elderly, I've got one question for Dr. Jacob. Mm -hmm. Have there been a major improvement in India regarding approach of geriatric rehabilitation? Amazing improvement. A lot of improvement in uh, many areas uh, uh, in geriatric care, uh, especially is happening in India. Um, <coughs> yes, uh, I could give you a few examples. Um, you know, uh, back in our place in SRM itself, uh, uh, since it's um, um, it, it's a medical college uh, uh, institution, we have uh, a lot of geriatric patients visiting, and uh, uh, this constant interaction between uh, uh, different medical teams. You know, you have your uh, the general physicians involved, you have your uh, surgeons involved, mm. orthopedicians involved, you have your rehab physicians, us involved. So there's a good collaboration. There's a very good collaboration. And uh, this is in the medical school side. And the big corporates are taking geriatric care to another level. Um, I am personally associated with a couple of them where, um, you know, uh, they're doing a very amazing job in terms of care for the acute care for geriatrics and at the same time, uh, uh, helping them live, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, have a healthy retired life or uh, healthy aging and giving them all the necessary things which they need um, uh, for uh, uh, geriatric care. There is this concept which is uh, ca catching up uh, hugely, which is called assisted living uh, skilled nursing facilities. Mm -hmm. But so but sometimes <coughs> I think it's difficult if the family is not cooperating, it's mm -hmm. very difficult to mm -hmm. give them a proper treatment. Mm -hmm. The family support is very important. Very yeah. important. Yeah. So uh, uh, back there, like, uh, you know, um, um, uh, there's some situations where the children are not uh, with the uh, 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 parents and uh, they stay here alone. And uh, uh, there are s several facilities where which, which help in uh, um, assisting these elderly, uh, mm -hmm. giving them whatever they need from their medical need, uh, what proper nutrition. So you mean a, a big country like India, <coughs> they are in a position to do that? Are we in this situation, Devla? No. Especially in uh, our public sector, unfortunately, they don't give much uh, importance to rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, the, the physiotherapists, the occupational therapists, they, they are in a corner in the hospital. They don't, they barely come in the world. According to me, they should be like a team, like you Part said. And parcel. Yes, <coughs> it should be there every time the doctor is doing the ward round to be there to understand what is the situation of the patient, what kind of treatment is needed, and then at that time the doctors, the specialists, will tell the physiotherapist, okay, you need to do this, this, this exercise for this patient. It's not uh, okay physiotherapy for this patient, and the physiotherapist will come and decide what to do. He does as if he's someone. D doing things on his own differently. Yes, yes, and and this He's is not part of the <coughs> team. Yes, this is a problem uh, here that we have in Mauritius when the patient has got a stroke uh, already. Uh, all the medical treatment done, the patient will get discharged, will go home, and nothing will be done. Yeah. Exactly. And then the patient where the patient was able to walk a little, end up to be bed bedridden, get bed sore, all these mm. problems so come. So uh, I think like I may want to add a few things, you know, what Dr. Devla was saying. Uh, um, uh, still, you know, like in, in India, uh, I wouldn't say like we are completely, uh, uh, every area this rehabilitation is penetrated. Still, we are facing a lot of challenges, like you said. Uh, I know the acute care is good, but then like patient has been sent home uh, uh, without proper education or awareness about rehab. Uh, but things are changing, especially with the National Medical Council mandating uh, uh, physical medicine and rehabilitation because a lot of lobbying was done uh, from the uh, uh, Physical Medicine Association to bring in uh, rehab into the mainstream medical education. So now people are starting to realize. So some 
something like that if you know forming an association here i don't know if there are uh, i don't uh, physical medicine rehabilitation doctors here but mm. through this collaboration yeah this is what we're going to talk at the later yeah. stage <laughs> uh, uh, in in this uh, so broadcast collaboration we could what we did was you know talking to the doctors we were ta- doing a lot of uh, cme cpd programs uh, uh, creating a lot of awareness it, it took almost i would say I, i am i am probably enjoying a lot of things which my seniors have done in the past mm-hmm. uh, but they've done a lot of work to bring things into the mainstream at uh, it would change things would take time but uh, i'm i'm hopeful that you know with this association uh, uh, we could contribute something to yeah. the dr jacob can you can you see things v- uh, visually improving yes from what you mention your elders and right now Absolutely. in 2022 almost end of 2022 can, can you f- i can give my own experience yes, please. when i uh, graduated from my uh, uh, medical school or like masters st john so one of the premier institutions in india uh none of the medical schools in india knew what i could do as a rehab medicine specialist mm-hmm. so uh, uh, because uh, this was back in 2016 and uh, they they were not like uh, familiar because they know oh, rehab means okay physiotherapy uh they w- they didn't get the concept of uh, a physiatry or all those things it was very much primitive so uh, uh <coughs> one second please so yeah we had one little technical issue and uh which we are going to solve is it okay so yeah. sorry for the disturbance yeah. so uh, uh, and then uh, uh, it so happened that when i uh, started talking to people no one knew about what we could do so this is just uh, uh, six years back i'm talking mm-hmm. so uh, so we had to i had to go to different hospitals different medical schools to uh, talk what i could do and then uh, things slowly changed and then they started to realize but then you have to put that effort in place uh, to make a change right so uh, i see now this now it is like uh, uh, caught like a wildfire everywhere there's rehab especially at least in chennai or the major cities rehab is very well taken and uh, both corporates ngos and uh, uh, medical is it only in chennai or all across <laughs> india all across india i would say all across india all the uh, cities have a uh, 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 full fledged rehab medicine department um and now i would say the penetration has gone to the second tier cities towns also so people are slowly uh, uh, realizing the importance of rehab especially the you know the multidisciplinary team approach okay is it a paid service both i would say at at srm uh, we have both uh, uh, free and paid service mm-hmm. uh, uh, from the medical school perspective everything is free except for your uh, uh, pharmacy related uh, uh, purchases mm-hmm. and you have a corporate sector also where you may have to pay for your services excellent <coughs> so coming back to dr divla so up to now the few days spent by dr jacob and yourself here what has been the collaboration up to now regarding patients initially yeah? so uh, we will continue our telemedicine okay so telemedicine is one of the key and uh, which we'll can be done remotely yes remotely mm-hmm. and uh, also we will welcome uh, doctors from srm to do cmes here cpd for d- doctors in mauritius mm-hmm. like uh, and also uh, if they can come and visit our patient here yeah. to do uh, for their treatment mm-hmm. and also uh, maybe if we can send some patients over there and we will also work on the research field uh, in maybe in diabetics and mm-hmm. uh, amputation all these things as if you've read o- everything that i've taken i've noted on my paper eh? <laughs> because you mentioned research earlier you mentioned uh, about geriatric which i uh, well, well, i had a question no it's good to have you here <laughs> because uh, you're helping me to proceed with the interview so it's also mentioned research institute center mm-hmm. please yes. elaborate thank you <laughs> <laughs> so uh, um, as i was mentioning earlier uh, srm is a big multi stream university and uh, as a part of medical school research forms the foundation of any medical school so uh, uh, we are uh, uh, working on a lot of areas uh, uh, with respect to research 
and uh, uh, what we look forward to do here is in terms of identifying the biggest problem and at present we came to know that diabetes is uh, a biggest issue and then i heard that like there's at least close to 400 to 500 amputations per year mm. that's a huge number more than 500 per year that more than and in terms of the percentage of uh, number of people suffering from uh, we can't say living with diabetes am i allowed to say the, the word suffering or living with diabetes living with it's that. better living, living with diabetes is a better better term but those who are suffering they know what they are uh, yes. <laughs> yes. now in terms of percentage out of every uh, five women in mauritius two are having diabetes issues and out of every five men three having mm. diabetes issues just to tell you that the number, the figures are very high here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it is something genetic from, because we've seen that Asian population, do you have same problem mm -hmm. regarding diabetes there? Yeah, we do, we do, uh, you know, like. We've uh, been told that it is a genetic, because you know, our forefathers, my my grandpa and your grandpa, maybe they were cousins there <laughs> in India. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, sure. I would say <laughs> genetics is just <laughs> a part of uh, the problem, but it, 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 there's a lot of other things uh, in terms of your lifestyle, mm -hmm. uh, you eating, know, habits. Your eating habits, eating habits. Uh, a lot of things come. Absence of exercise. <laughs> yeah, eh? these, these these are all the things comes in. I would like to put these in the front, you know, yes, rather than true. the genetics because genetics is. I wouldn't say like probably it's, no it's less than one percent, maybe. Yeah, uh, very, uh, very uh, they said that uh, what you eat is what, what you are, what you, oh, eat. You you are, are what, what you eat. eat. Yeah. It is, it is around 80 percent. Uh, you are what you eat, mm -hmm. and maybe mm -hmm. the 20 percent will be about the lifestyle eating, hab uh, sorry, uh, exercise, yeah. sedentary lifestyles. This will become so. The main culprit should be is what the eating, eating, eating habits. habits, okay, eating uh, habits, proper nutrition because. Uh, 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 but we eat more or less in, in India, s b b uh, again, I c I back to the forefathers, we are still having uh, our staple diet as rice. Okay, yes. the main diet, I, I think uh, the main food is rice, uh, like yeah. in India, yeah. okay, and all the flowers and uh, white flowers, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. and all that. So it's almost the same chapati there, roti, here <coughs> it would be bread, uh, again roti, mm -hmm. you've come across all these foods. Mm -hmm. So everything and the drinks and everything. <laughs> But uh, what I have seen is personally because I don't see like you can't remove the staple out of your diet, right? Yeah. So uh, that forms the major part of your diet. Uh, a lot of penetration of these processed food uh, of late, you know, that mm -hmm. could add a big uh, problem. In terms so of coming back to the research institute, <coughs> what what are you doing exactly? Yes. Yeah, so uh, at present we are working on few projects, uh, especially uh, 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 diabetes in uh, 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 persons with disabilities. Um, uh, we we have uh, submitted a project for almost uh, uh, a two crore grant for uh, uh, special uh, children <coughs> participating in Special Olympics. There is something called Special Olympics uh, which happens and uh, uh, that proposal is on the line and uh, we do a lot of uh, technology related rehab work, uh, s uh, smart devices in rehab, uh, virtual reality, I know things like that. So. Uh, uh, we are focusing more on the mainstream, uh, um, you know, rehab-related research uh, there, and uh, uh, back there with with, with my team, uh, uh, with Dr. Karthike and Dr. Mm -hmm. Reshma, mm -hmm. uh, we are able to do a lot of things from a patient perspective. Because although our focus is majorly not on diabetes, because uh, we have a separate, very good uh, diabetic uh, team taken care of by uh, uh, Dr. Kumar. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are looking forward, you know, <coughs> here in Mauritius, <coughs> excuse me, uh, because diabetes is the biggest uh, burden here and uh, involving our specialist diabetic team from in India, uh, from SRM, and identifying, uh, probably conducting a, a nationwide study mm -hmm. of what is the burden of uh, diabetes, because diabetes forms the uh, you know, pa path for all the diseases, non-communicable yes. diseases like stroke, NCD, hypertension, um, hypertension and cardiovascular yeah. everything, disease, everything. And all the NCDs, non-communicable yes. diseases, all the NCDs. So, uh, uh, identifying them early, trying to prevent it, uh, you know, more like a primary prevention, and then uh, patients who had had some impairments or disabilities, trying to use uh, you know cutting-edge rehabilitative methods mm -hmm. uh, to give them the best possible treatment through uh, telemedicine. Mm -hmm. So this is what you know uh, we are visualizing and I'm 
hopeful that like uh, in the coming years we'll mm-hmm. be able to achieve that yeah before we proceed further let me just <coughs> share with our viewers because every week we have what we call heart news it's not because we've got doctors on this set that <laughs> we are we are using this term uh, this is uh, the, the pro- bro- uh, broadcast is called aka over i've already translated t- for you okay. uh, earlier and we've got heart news every week so uh, we had the visit of uh, mrs lois trachen who is a disability advocate and speaker we whom you've met uh, she's a, some uh, someone who has turned blind because of diabetes mm-hmm. at the age of 21 mm-hmm. so she was with us here on the set of Jorf TV and also we had the visit that was on the 7th of November on the 8th of November we had the visit of uh, his excellency his excellency Mr Kawakuchi Shuchiro I ho- hope that I pronounced the name correctly mm-hmm. ambassador extraordinary and plenipotentiary of the embassy of Japan in Mauritius he was visiting he visited Jorf On the 10th of November we had uh, a very nice article in one of the newspaper local newspaper called La Vie Catholique about a GRF rehabilitation treatment center mm-hmm. okay and also we had a free capacity building conference for NGO uh, that was uh, on the same day and also we had that uh, event on the 11th of November which is on the occasion of uh, the anniversary 11th anniversary of Global Rainbow Foundation lots of uh, events on that day and uh, in a few minutes we're going to ask uh, uh, please uh, can you share the video with us there yes so let's have a look at uh, here you are okay a few images of what uh, we had on the event of you can see the signing of you can uh, any one of you can comment eh? please jacob yeah, you can yeah. comment so uh, <coughs> we have uh, professor parsanaman and uh, uh, pro vice chancellor dr uh, ravi kumar uh, so uh, he heads the entire medical faculty there and uh, <coughs> that was a very uh, a productive meeting back then and uh, we were able to uh, uh, have a lot of discussion in terms of uh, how to take forward the zmou and you could see uh, professor parasuraman and dr ravi kumar discussing uh, about uh, you know the key aspects of uh, uh, the mou there <coughs> yes you can proceed so uh, uh, we have our uh, medical dean dr sundaram and dr kartikeyan is also there so uh, with this uh, uh, visit of professor parasuraman was you know uh, uh, very uh, key to us in terms of us being able to be associated uh, Uh, with uh, uh, GRF and uh, <coughs> this uh, our our uh, uh, premier institution uh, uh, headed by Dr Ravi Kumar uh, he was very uh, 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 you know what motivating in terms of uh, whatever necessary has to be done with regards to the MOU or even things of the MOU which could be uh, executed uh, here in Mauritius he was very supportive in terms of uh, getting things uh, over to us <coughs> Dr Divla I'm sure you feel very proud of what's happening right now and you being part of the team and gi- uh, giving your super collaboration to make things happen Yeah sure I'm very proud and uh, also it's a very it's a good feeling you know when you're able to help some people when you're able to to give someone a proper guidance a proper treatment you feel good when the patient will come later and thank you and uh, do you very often dr jacob come across uh, such people uh, i mean patients coming and uh, just now taking realizing that they were unable to walk some month figure they were stuck in a wheelchair and now they are mm-hmm. like uh, doing their normal activities yeah yeah many many i would say uh, a lot of patients you know the, they get get back to you they send you gifts Uh, yes. because uh, we get to associated uh, with them once you uh, start rehabilitating a patient you get associated with that patient for a lifetime you know uh, it's not that you treat and then leave uh, so uh, uh, it's very rewarding in that way uh, and uh, as since i have had that experience so i could also uh, relate to that very easily uh, you know a lot of patients a lot of patients uh, they give that personal a, satisfaction absolutely yes. absolutely okay so let me just share another uh, news with you i need your collaboration for that uh, divla on the 26th of november i mean yes. you are already aware we're going to have the blood donation campaign uh, uh, here at uh, rtc itself yes. and you're from 8:30 to 3 p.m. so we are targeting 111 pints of blood you know why because we are celebrating our 11th birthday oh. 
So we are going to have the collaboration of St. John Ambulance, of uh, the Liverpool Fans Club, Manchester United Fans Club. Uh, we are going to have Dias, uh, the Diabetes Group. Uh, we are going to have the uh, Green Cross. Okay, so all these uh, NGOs will be with us together to make it happen, and of course, blood bank and everybody. So we're going to have it here uh, in, in in the premises uh, of Jorif itself on Saturday. So we are looking forward to have the collaboration of each and every one. We should blow the news so that we make uh, we're going to make it uh, a success. So before we end, uh, we close this uh, interview. Uh, just uh, rapidly, I've come across one. A, a few of your core competencies you mentioned: neuro rehabilitation, sports medicine, and also one term, but is a term: spasticity management. What is that? Yeah. So uh, uh, spasticity, uh, uh, it's it, it's a uh, a condition. I would say, like it's the problem happens post uh, brain injury or spinal cord injury. It's where your muscles get stiffened up or tightened. And um, many, many places, uh, not adequate treatment is not being done for it. So although uh, rehab, uh, physiotherapy or occupation therapy would help, but there are medical interventions like uh, injections or medicines which could help in reducing the spasticity. So I'm uh, specialized in interventional spasticity management where uh, uh, I could uh, perform ultrasound guided injections, uh, EMG nerve conduction guided injections. Uh, for patients uh, who are having spasticity, this would give me the uh, accurate way of hitting the target much uh, hmm. easily. And you ha you have to go for an MRI and things like this before. No, I would use an ultrasound machine <coughs> and an ENG machine, which uh, which could which will happen real time when I'm doing the procedure. Mm -hmm. So uh, this could be a big aid in terms of helping the rehab professionals, the physiotherapists, or occupational therapists execute their uh, treatment in an effective way. Because if, um, if a tight muscle, it will be difficult, it'll be, they'll find it very hard to uh, execute their treatment. So this intervention can help in guiding that. And do you sometimes <coughs> use acupressure or acupuncture, things like? Um, do you believe in that? Uh, it does. You know, there are, there are uh, uh, benefits of that because in uh, our uh, physical medicine practice, our interdisciplinary team... Traditional Chinese. Chinese. Yeah. yeah. They, they, there is a certain degree of scope in that also. Mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, uh, Although, like, we are not, like, very much practicing... Yeah, yeah, definitely. Pressure, ...but I've, uh, I've uh, read literature on that, and I see that it's a certain uh, effect to that. Dr. Dula, any question for Dr. Jekyll? Yeah, so I want to know, for severe spasticity, if a patient has been neglected, have not done any, uh, any physical therapy for many years, do you think it works, the intervention, it works? Yeah, so uh, uh, Thank managing you. Uh, spasticity, uh, we have to first look into whether, you know, whether it is affecting one particular group of muscle or it is the entire body and that way we Most is the entire body yeah. you know that the patient <coughs> develops severe scoliosis mm -hmm. and the entire body is very spastic uh, so it would it would definitely help because uh, irrespective whether the patient is going to be mobile or uh, going to walk or not uh, at least uh, carrying the patient in the bed uh, if he's tight and lying stiff in the bed for the caregivers to give care is going to be difficult yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so definitely uh, giving medical intervention for spasticity with medications if necessary injections um, uh, we do you know i do uh, 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 spasticity management for hygiene you know there are uh, certain patients where uh, they have severe adductor spasticity where uh, the, the legs start to crisscross yes. and uh, the uh, uh, personal hygiene becomes a problem. So and things <laughs> getting worse <coughs> with time. So uh, I use uh, uh, spasticity management or injections to help them in the hygiene part, but it does play a major role um, uh, for anyone with uh, spasticity. Yes, because sometimes it's difficult <coughs> to take their blood pressure, you know. If mm -hmm. they are stiff. Yeah, they are very stiff. And mm -hmm. even to to withdraw blood for blood tests, mm -hmm. it's, it's it very is, difficult. It even, yes. even f yeah, just to take the blood sample, sometimes yes. it's so difficult yes. because they are <laughs> so stiff. Yes. So with, with this uh, spasticity <coughs> management, I think if we can relieve those patients a little bit, mm -hmm. I'm yes. sure you have someone in mind when you're putting this I question. I have many. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we, we could also do in a way where... Uh, 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 just to test to see whether you know the patient is going to benefit we use local anesthetics before going into the drug itself mm. um, so try to see because that's going to be a shorter acting uh, drug mm. so we give that to see on local anesthesia yeah okay. yeah so we inject it in the muscle to see if there is any effect happening so probably you could try that out here 
Okay. Um, so I could share some resources in terms of how people... Dr. Jacob, I think you have to extend your stand, Mauritius. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, doctors, so it was a pleasure to have you. Just uh, before we wrap up, one last question from my side, and then you're going to wrap up. Uh, how you dealt with the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, COVID-19... Was uh, that a challenge? It was, it was a challenge because I was involved uh, in the uh, medical uh, treatment back there because um, uh, when I started with the institution, um, that's when the COVID started, the first wave yeah. started, and our ICUs were flooded. And there's no... 2020, I think, yeah, two years ago. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, our ICUs were flooded, and uh, that's when I proposed to start COVID rehab. Uh, starting from the ICU itself so that this could help in terms of uh, freeing the bed for another patient sooner. So uh, that helped in a lot way to uh, uh, bring in more, more patients uh, who would need, uh, um, you know, uh, ICU uh, care for mm -hmm. the COVID. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in, uh, as, as rehab professionals, uh, uh, as physiatrists, we get involved from the ICU itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, with my expertise, I was able to uh, guide them in terms of how to identify which patient can move out of the ICU faster and what rehab interventions which we could give in the ICU itself. So we had the rehab team inside the COVID ICU. Uh, physiotherapists, occupation therapists, inside the... Which was something system. quite new, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 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 and a uh, lot of patients were able to come out faster and then we were able to bring in a lot of patients new. But uh, I would say uh, <coughs> uh, that way I was able to do a lot of changes there, but uh, I was also seeing a lot of deaths and... Um, I guess you had COVID yourself also. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> As everyone here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And well, uh, almost everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and more than the COVID, now the long COVID setting in on yes. the patients. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, we are trying to work on that. We are doing a research on long COVID back there. So uh, a lot of things we are learning about this virus and it's still evolving. So uh, uh, we just have to, uh, uh, although we are, we are trying to evade it, but uh, we just have to take, yeah, we have, we have, to, to, we have yeah. to be very careful. Then, mm -hmm. uh, definitely, uh, definitely. And anything new can crop up at any time. <coughs> Absolutely. We are Dr. Ivla, yeah, any question? Yeah, so uh, you've seen some patients in these few days. I know it's a quite short stay. Maybe you could give us some more of your expertise to our to our uh, medical team and also our patient. So how did you find us, uh, the way our team is working? How did you find here RTC? Wonderful. I would say like... Uh, Be very honest. <laughs> 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 no, I, was, I was very impressed uh, uh, when I first... I, I had a little bit of prior information from Dr. Karthikeyan because he had visited uh, GRF uh, before. Um, so when I came and saw uh, uh, the uh, rehabilitation and training center, very well uh, um, you know, uh, planned and designed and uh, an amazing team um, of uh, rehab professionals uh, I feel like uh, everything is complete. It's just that... Uh, With Dr. Divla at the head, not to forget. <laughs> <laughs> everything, everything is uh, very well done and complete. And I see a lot of happy patients uh, coming and getting treated and going. Uh, a lot of amazing work is already being done. And I think uh, we just... Come more to go. More yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely, there's always room yes, for improvement. Yes, yes there there's should always. Be. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, well, some true. people even mention, sometimes mention the sky is a limit. Mm -hmm. I say, even when you reach the sky, you can still push it up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> no, but do you think uh, Mauritius will be able to bridge that gap, you know, be between medical and paramedical, you know, because there's always the gap that many patient thinks. Do it you think we'll be able to bridge that gap and make people know the importance of will, paramedical treatment? It will, it will definitely. Definitely, because uh, everything gets a transition, you know. Back in India also, it took time uh, for that gap to reduce. Even still, we face that challenge in many parts of India. But I would say that would that is possible. But um, uh, using our uh, uh, intervention, you know, uh, our uh, uh, specialization, because we play the biggest link between the uh, uh, paramedical field yes. and the medical team. Mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. Because we understand the medical part and we understand the rehab the part yes. also. Yes. So we form the complete bridge between them and uh, probably, uh, you know, with this collaboration, uh, doing a lot of uh, awareness talks, a lot of CMEs or CPD programs, uh, educating the doctors here, um, um, uh, you know, we're getting them to know about the rehabilitative interventions, uh, the interdisciplinary team interventions. I'm sure that, like, we 
can achieve it if mm-hmm. we are very uh, you know proactive in that mm-hmm. yes i i remember we did our first <coughs> cme like continuous medical uh, uh, program we did here uh, for this year was by, by dr kartikeyan mm-hmm. and lots of doctors came they love his cme the way he explained his two hour cme was so fruitful mm-hmm. and all the doctors took his email address to ask for for uh, you know for advice for their patient they were very happy with mm-hmm. what he did mm-hmm. so unfortunately we could uh, organize one but i hope next year you will come and we'll sure, organize sure, one sure sure definitely yes. uh, we are looking forward to it <laughs> it was being mentioned at the very first uh, of the inter- <laughs> uh, the first moment of the interview that dr jacob is uh, looking forward to come back again to mauritius uh, <laughs> uh, for the island itself so uh, yeah yeah uh, let's uh, wrap up with you let's come uh, wrap the in- wrap up the in- the interview how you feel today yeah uh, on the set of jorf yeah. web tv wonderful very uh, uh, nicely organized and uh, you feel we can give some collaboration in india regarding absolutely <laughs> absolutely uh, absolutely i think uh, uh, there is we we have a telecommunication team there yeah. uh, who, who are active in terms of journalism and media there and uh, i'm sure uh, with whatever uh, uh, way which are doing i think jrf is in every every aspect, aspect. <laughs> every aspect you can't uh, say that you don't do anything but uh, We, we are very glad to be associated and i'm looking forward to visiting gamarishis again um, um and see how uh, we could have this collaboration to you know go to next higher uh, okay. heights please don't forget uh, to share this uh, broadcast after with all uh, your friends and collaborators and everyone so dear viewers we've reached today's end of program and uh, i remind you that uh, next week we are going to have the accueil ouvert on va avoir l'émission accueil ouvert de nouveau uh, lundi matin comme d'habitude à partir de 10h30 à midi et n'oublions pas que nous avons le la fameuse euh, don de sang qui va être qui va avoir lieu le 26 novembre euh, samedi 26 novembre encore une fois merci bonne fin d'après-midi